everybody. Um, in this lesson, I'd like to I'd like to jump right in and tell you about variables. However, you might want to know the layout of the land first, so that's what we're going to go with. Um, this is Scratch. It's a uh, it's a program. It's a, com a computer programming language. <coughs> that instead of typing in commands, you drag and drop commands. The, uh, they give you a s stack of various commands that are all in these tabs. Uh, well, if these are tabs, then, you know, whatever these are. <laughs> these little containers. Um, Sorry, I was distracted. Oh, we've got people outside doing stuff. Um, in the backdrop, the backdrop is the stage. Uh, or I'm sorry, the stage is where everything occurs. The backdrop is its current, um, like what's actually on it displayed on it. And you can you can either pick your own or draw your own, you know, download a picture or whatnot or draw it and put it on there. I'm gonna use this uh XY grid for now just so you have an idea of uh how things move around. They uh they set the screen up in this XY coordinate system. Um, in math, you know, when you're doing your Cartesian coordinates, x goes left and right, and then y goes up and down. Um, and then if you had a z, that would be nearer and farther into it. And they kind of have that in here um, as a uh, you know, bring it to the front or go back further sort of thing. Like the sprites will overlap, so it does have a Z in that regard. Uh, zero, zero starts in the center of the screen, the origin. Uh, some, It's probably easier f for most kids to think of it, you know, it would be easier if it were in the bottom left. But this is, I don't know, this actually makes a little bit, this, you know, this makes a good amount of sense in getting them used to the way things are in actual programming because you often do have to deal with negative values as well. Uh, this this on its own doesn't do a whole, a whole lot. The trick is the sprites actually move around on this, um, on this backdrop. And here, let me pull in a different one just so you can see. Uh, let's see, yeah. Or wait, that's a sprite, sorry. I thought I was on, wait, backdrops. Oh, yeah, yeah, backdrops. And then open one from here. Let's say you pull in something like this. Y you know, you can bring in a any kind of backdrop, it doesn't matter what you use, but this, when you're moving your sprites around, they'll show up on that backdrop. So if, if you had picked something else, then this sprite will appear above that. But yeah, as I say, I'm going to use this for now so that you can get an idea of the motion. I usually just draw like a little dot. You could you can use anything that you want, but um, before I go any further, let me, uh, I want to clarify this point. This is very important, okay? This, this is the area that you'd be able to paint your sprite in. Now, if you were to paint your sprite in, um, let's say you paint it over here. Then... Um, 
you you haven't like specified the center <laughs> so in using that the center is going to end up being over here I'm, I'll leave that dot there so that you can see what I'm talking about here now remember zero zero is the origin it's the center where movement you know movement is all basically relative to that point so if I set that sprite that I just painted to zero zero you would think that it would jump so that the center of the object was at zero zero but because I hadn't painted my costume on the center like because I painted it a little bit off to the side then it ends up being off to the side an equal amount now the trick to fixing that is you have to tap this button up here and then you set it to what you want it like say if you wanted to set it to you know right where the corner of his smile was then boom anytime Anytime that you move, that point is going to be referenced as the center of the object. And you can set it to anything that you want, but we'll do that for now because that makes it, you know, I guess that's easy enough. Let me erase that dot now because it's not really needed. Um, so, zero, zero. If you were to move, if you were to change the, the X by 50, and it moves over along the X 50 pixels. Then if you change the Y by 50, then it's going to move up along the, up on the Y as well, 50 pixels. And you can see here to get an idea, they they put a grid in um, every 100 pixels. Uh, it's it's a total of 480 across by 360 up and down. So if you divide that by two, you get all of your positive numbers um, going from zero to 240. And then along the Y, it goes up 180. Uh, and then conversely, if you, if you go backwards, then you're doing your negatives, negative numbers. Like if I go negative 50 on the X, then it's going to jump back 50 pixels from this, you know, from where the origin was. The movement, that's, well, this is just jumping straight to that position, okay? Uh, let's go back to zero, zero. Okay, it's centered. Now, if you were to do move a certain amount of steps, that's, you're actually moving pixels. Um, if you do 50 again it's going to move 50 pixels. Now the thing is, is it's going to move 50 pixels in the direction it's facing. At the moment, uh, let me see, at the moment it's facing 90. And the reason that is, is because scratch sets 0 is up. Think as, as 0 is like 12 o'clock. <laughs> it's facing straight up. Okay, so um, just as there, you know, if there are 360 degrees in a circle, so uh, if you were to do a 90 degree angle, then you're going 90, you're, you're turning 90 degrees clockwise. Boom. And then you do another 90 degrees, you'd be pointing down. Or wait, sorry, that's not turn 90, that's point 90. So yeah, 180. That's 90 plus 90 would be 180. So he'd be facing down. And the thing is, is once he's facing in that direction, then when you move any certain, you know, if you move at all, then it's going to be moving in that direction. So, boom, he's just jumped 50 pixels down because he's facing down. And if you want to if you want them to go up again, you can either turn them around, face them up, and then move that many steps, or you can do 
negative steps, which means he's going backwards. So negative 50. Boom, he just jumped back. And you can, you know, you can repeat this. Say you just move like, I don't know, 10 steps. Then, you know, he, uh, he scoots along that many pixels every time you run that command. And that's how you often make games. They'll, you know, uh, sprites just move around the screen a whole lot. That's, that's how they do the illusion of, uh, just keeping the screen interactive, I guess. So, yes, pointing in direction, we've got that down. We've got the Cartesian coordinate system down. Pointing towards objects, you can, instead of telling it a specific direction, you can actually just tell it to point towards something. So, let me wrap this in a forever loop so that it'll keep doing it. This, it'll continually point at you know, point towards the mouse pointer. So if the m mouse pointer is over here, then then you can see that it's, you know, <laughs> it keeps looking towards that. Here, hang on, where's, there it is. Okay, let's center our sprite again. Um, oh yeah, yeah, okay, so and it wouldn't necessarily have to be the pointer. If you had another sprite, then you could have it point towards that instead. Let's say you do. Uh, let's draw another sprite real quick. Say we set this at fifty fifty. And then we have our sprite, the the original sprite will have that point towards the new one that we drew. Boom. And now he's pointing up towards it. I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but we could let's make that bigger just so you can see it. <laughs> um where is that set size? Mm. Oops. I think I just threw a decimal point in there accidentally. There we go. Okay. So yeah, instead of instead of just straight moving to a certain location, you can do glide, which gives you the ability to uh, gradually slide to a location. So let's say we want them to slide backwards a bit. Hang on, we'll have them slide over here, or glide, whatever you want to call it. But yeah basically the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Zero, zero. This again, it wouldn't change the direction he's facing because it's a um, it's doing the Cartesian movement instead of the, uh, the pixel uh, instead of specifying I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to di differentiate the two, but if it gives you coordinates in here, okay. If the command has, uh, if it has the x y coordinates in it, then it doesn't do the rotation, all right. Well, in fact, this doesn't do the rotation either. Um, but it moves in the direction the object is facing. 
this this is always tied to this these are basically independent of that it doesn't it doesn't matter when you use the glide command it just sort of goes there uh, without paying attention to the direction so yeah those The change change x by and change y by are sort of like the movement here, except they also ignore the direction. They just go uh, that many steps. This the y would change it along the y, and then the x would change it along the x axis. The bounce block is if it normally let's say you were to have your sprite go all the way it would just run off the screen like that um, however if you do the if on edge bounce command then it has a new uh, It has a new trick where once it gets to the edge, then your sprite turns around. Oh, you know what? Maybe you have to do that every time. There. Okay. I, I really thought once you called it, it just sets that as the way that it functions. I... Uh, Could have sworn that's how it, how it was, but maybe not. Oh. You can set the rotation style. Um, as left, right. I'm trying to think what that one does. I haven't really used this that much. The all around is, is the way that I was saying where it's just... Um, it would point left and, or, excuse me, uh, it would point in the, you know, clockwise direction that you set it. Here, let me swap this back, backdrop to blank, and then I'll hide this for now. Uh, da 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 da, no, 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 sorry, it looks, hide. Okay, so... Um, yeah, set rotation style all around. I think that's what it defaults to. Um, the default method is all around. And then if you do the left, right, I think then it only turns left or right. It doesn't do up and down. Or wait. Let's see. I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason for it, I just can't think of what. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah, okay. Sorry. It, it was what I was thinking, it just, uh... I hadn't clicked it, so it didn't actually run it. Uh... But yeah, the, the left-right rotation style is that it will only face left or right. So these numbers, if it's, I guess basically if it's a positive number, then it's always facing right. And then if it's a negative number, then it'll end up facing left, perhaps. I don't know the specifics. Let's say we set it to negative 1. Yeah, it's left. I don't know how far that goes. Maybe at negative 181, then it wraps around. Yeah, okay, so it's similar. Negative 180 would be the turning point, I'd imagine. Well, okay. 179. Yeah, okay, so 180 ends up being it faces right. Uh, then zero 
it faces right as well. I don't think I ever really use that. I've, I've probably used it in like maybe one of my projects and there's probably a reason to use it but I'd, I don't know. Maybe on a platformer if you only want your guy to face left and right it might be easier to do it that way because then if, if he were to say if he was jumping in a diagonal direction he could jump in that direction but his his sprite won't face diagonal. He'll just be facing to the right. Um, so yeah, there there would be a reason for it. It's just I don't know. I don't I don't think I usually use it. So yeah, I, I believe that covers most of the motion blocks. I wish there was a timer on here that told you how long you've been recording. Maybe I should set that up as a uh, just as a thing. Uh, I suppose I'll pause for now. We'll just call that motion. Um, yeah.